My name is James Gray. I'm an actor, dancer, choreographer, writer, teacher, director, an all-round theatrician. And part of what makes my work happen is wondering what the hell it's all about. Now, as we veer towards a new decade, we are in the midst of the Me Too movement, women standing as one against sexual harassment in the workplace. Now, this was spurned largely, but not exclusively, by the film producer Harvey Weinstein and his rather vigorous use of the casting couch. Women were coming forward saying, I was propositioned, I feared for my career, I felt I had to comply with his lurid wishes. And one wonders just exactly what is going on here. Bear in mind that Hollywood is a small, incestuous environment, and everybody knows what everybody else is doing. Everybody apparently knew that Harvey Weinstein was a bit of a groper, and it was an open secret that the casting couch was alive and well in Harvey's office. The issue also is that the press would have us believe that these actresses and these assistants and these women were virginal schoolgirls who were cast adrift in a big wide world where they were lost and taken advantage of. But let's be clear here, these people were in the business. These people are in the industry. These actresses were coming forward, they know what it's all about. To be an actress, you need a certain awareness that maybe the average suburban housewife doesn't have. And given the fact that everybody knew Harvey Weinstein was a bit of a groper, it beggars belief that people would go into this thing with eyes closed and think, oh dear, I've been touched up. How does that happen? <gasps> in London, for example, in the London offices, uh, Harvey was busy trying to proposition all of the assistants in the London offices. Except in England, the national pastime is moaning and complaining. Everybody moans about the weather, they moan about the politics, they moan about the football team. So when someone is coming on to them into the office, they moan and complain. Oi, knock it off, Harvey, they said. And they marched into the centre management and said, get him off our back. So they had a word, Harvey, leave the staff alone. So everything went quite smoothly in the London offices. However, Hollywood is a different matter. There's a different mentality there. Money is the deciding factor on anything. If someone can make you money, or there's a prospect of making money out of them, well, it's all a very different ball game. Actresses were coming forward saying, oh, I was propositioned, I felt, you know, if I spurned him down, I would lose a role. But let's be clear, Harvey Weinstein was not the only person making movies in Hollywood. There are other producers. Uh, every actress, when this whole thing hit the headlines, every actress came forward with a horror story. Yes, he had Proposition B, and me, and me, because this is Hollywood, and everyone loves a bandwagon. Everybody was on board. Nobody wanted to lose out on that lovely, juicy publicity. So everybody was there saying, oh, yes, I had a near miss. This happened, that happened. Some woman came forward two years previously two years, she had attempted to sell Harvey Weinstein a script. Now, his habit, apparently, was to have meetings in hotel rooms. OK, well, I've had meetings in hotel rooms. That's not beyond the realms of possibility, so OK. So she goes off to a meeting in a hotel room. A fat old guy in a bathrobe opens the door. Now, wouldn't you think you'd go, oh, terribly sorry, I must be early, I'll wait for you in the bar, I'll come back in a minute. But no, no, no. Fearing for her career, she went inside. Now, this is a business meeting, she's attempting to sell a script. Where's the assistant? Where's the accountant? Where's the hangers-on that are de rigor in the film industry? No one is there. She is alone with Harvey Weinstein in a bathrobe in a hotel room. So, fearing for her career, she has a drink. Hang on, says Harvey, I'm just going to take a shower. So he's in the shower. Oh, come and do my back, he says. So, fearing for her career, she goes in and soaps up his back. Now, it all comes out later. Oh, yes, I had sex with Harvey Weinstein in the shower, and I really didn't want to. Now, OK, it's not the 18th century, so maybe a woman being compromised of her virtue is no longer a fate worse than death. Perhaps she thought soaping up a fat old walrus in the shower was worth a risk. Maybe he would be dazzled by her, her stunning technique and award her a, a million dollar contract for her script. I don't think she got the sale. 
So she's coming forward, and now she's saying, oh, I was propositioned, I was assaulted, and whatever. No, darling, you weren't assaulted. You made a bad decision that you are now regretting. It's okay, we've all been there, but don't try the old victim case, because I can walk into any shopping centre anywhere in the world and say to anyone in the street, what does casting couch mean to you? And everyone goes, oh, yeah, oh, we know what all about that. It's in the vernacular, it's in the vocabulary. Everybody knows what casting couch is about. So if you choose to stick your fingers in the fire, well, there's a possibility they may get burnt. So oh, in in the nonsense that came forward, everybody, yes, I had a, in, experienced this. Had a, there are serious accusations of rape in amongst all the nonsense, in amongst all the attention-seeking and pick me and look at me and look at me. There are serious allegations of rape. He's already paid off eight women over the years to keep them quiet and silence them. But the chances are Harvey will have the best lawyers money can buy. And they will quite logically say, well, you know, uh, in this climate, my client won't get a fair trial. And in this strange world of American plea bargaining, where you can walk into a court as a serial killer and come out with a parking fine, who knows where that's going to lead? Now, we know they're very anti-celebrity in America at the moment after the O.J. Simpson business. Now, anybody who's a celebrity is now dealt a tougher blow. Look at old Bill Cosby. Years and years of drugging women and, and, and raping them while they're out. Very strange. He's now in jail, 83 years old, whatever. now in jail. No, no, he said, I don't repent. It was consensual. Quite what some woman consented to while she was out for the count on a couch. Gee, that must have been a thrill a minute for her. But anyway, and so it goes. But in the aftermath of the whole Harvey Weinstein thing, and let's be clear, it wasn't just Harvey Weinstein. There were others too. Uh, the consistent thing with all of them was they had a face that only a mother could love, and one suspects the only human interaction they would get is by pulling the old, you know, come with me, I'll make you a star trick. Old Harvey said to a, a French actress, she could star in his next three movies if he had a threesome with him. And apparently his modus operandi was to conduct these hotel meetings in bathrobes. Oh, whoops, my bathrobe fell open. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm exposed. Oh, right. You're going to fall for that one. Then you kind of get what you deserve. But after the aftermath, finger pointing was every, everyone was involved. Oh, uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, Morgan Freeman, 80 odd. Oh, he made some comment at a party about, I look love, luscious in this dress. Uh, Dustin Hoffman, 80 something. Oh, he made some comment. Oh, come on. The, the, the burden of proof was uh, getting lower and lower. Some comment? Sticks and stones, people, for God's sake. What are we breeding here? Precious princesses who are going to fall apart at every comment? But worse still, every time a finger was pointed, a career was just halted in its tracks, like some old-style morals clause. You know, you will not bring the company into disrepute. We don't have those anymore. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? It's a nice ploy, isn't it? Someone gets on your nerves, you really don't like them, point the finger. Because, of course, there's never been a malicious woman anywhere, has there? And so it goes on. And it's got to a point now now, where everyone's walking about on eggshells, not knowing where they stand, what's going on. Yes, sexual harassment in the workplace is not good. The press would have us believe that this is some sterile uh, suburban workplace. Well, it's not. It's movie making. Movie making is like kindergarten with adults. Someone once said acting was doing in public what normal people do in private. So you've got to be touchy feely. It's a very different dynamic. So it's always open to someone taking liberties and overstepping the mark. OK, but people, you've got to be aware. You've got to look after yourself. You can't say, oh, yes, I was molested in a hotel room two years ago. Did you say anything to anyone? No. Did you go to the police? No, because basically Basically, you made a bad decision that you now regret. OK, fine. But with all of this finger pointing, nobody knows where they stand. Intriguingly, there was a, a survey a little while in, uh, ago in the press, uh, 18 to 40-ish people, saying that young people are having less sex than ever. Less sex than ever. Masturbation is through the roof. Very uncomfortable. And the over-50s are at it like rabbits. 
Well, you can see why. If you go to a dance and say to some, some girl, oh, gee, you look great in that frock, you misogynist, sexist pig, how dare you treat me like a popsicle? Oh, sorry, love, I'll go home and wait till I'm over 50. Good God, it all gets too hard. Well, that's the world as we know it. Until next time, keep your hand on it. Thank you.